Hey everybody, Stephen Bogren here from Pro Physique, and today I'm talking about the scale. Ooh. My name is Steven, and this is a video about health and fitness things, and I work for Pro Physique, and I am just a guy with a fitness thing for you. All right, hey everybody, I hope you're all having a great day. Ooh, here we go, getting ready for the Arnold. And why am I talking about the scale? Because for me, it matters this week. I have to make weight. And for all of you, it matters as well. Particularly being if you're in a dieting phase and you're like, man, I really want to be seeing progress. Maybe you're a weight class athlete like myself. And you're like, man, I really need to make sure that I make weight so that I can compete this weekend. And for those of us that are trying to build the physique we want, we don't necessarily want the scale going up at any kind of crazy rate. We do want to stay in a place where we're going to be healthy. And it absolutely can create some real mental fatigue when the scale's not cooperating. Um, and it's frustrating and I absolutely get it. And the reason behind why I wanted to talk about the scale today, and there's a couple of main points that I have, is because my scale was fluctuating a lot this week. And that can be normal. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about um, is that scale fluctuation and weight fluctuation is very normal. Okay? So it's based on a whole slew of factors. But your weight can change based on simple things like stress, your workouts, and the inflammation that you're holding. If I'm working out a lot harder and I'm not recovering as well, I can hold extra inflammation within my muscle cells. That's water, and that can be weight. Stress does the same thing. You know, stress causes inflammation. So yes, working out is a physiological stress, but if we're stressed out emotionally and psychologically, that can also cause some inflammatory response. One of the other things that stress can do to mess with the scale for water weight fluctuations is we can slow digestion down. And so if we haven't had a good poop in a few days, that can be a reason why, hey, maybe we are weighing in heavier the next morning. It can actually slow peristalsis and the pushing of food through the intestines down. So maybe even just day to day, we could see some fluctuation after a very stressful day where food just didn't move through as quickly and it took longer and yup, oh man, we'll see the scale up. Or we can see the scale up after a stressful day, both psychologically, emotionally, mentally, and physiologically. Cardio is probably one of the really big ones I see here in terms of high intensity interval cardio. A lot of times that can create a lot of stress response and training inflammation there and we can hold weight just from that inflammatory response. You know what else can cause us to change water weights? Dehydration or overhydration, right? What? Steven, yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> so if we drink a lot of water before bed, right? and we maybe don't get up to pee it throughout the night, guess what? That water is still in our system when we wake up and weigh in in the morning, or it can be, okay? Also, say maybe you're like me, I do jujitsu later on at night. I can oftentimes wake up a little bit dehydrated, and that can have a fluctuation down for the scale with me. So hydration status absolutely matters. Your electrolytes absolutely matter. Did you change how much sodium you got in that day? Was it drastically up and or down? That can change how we weigh in. Did you change your food choices and fiber, right? We talked about digestion with stress, but digestion can also be related to food choices. If we got a lot more fibrous food sources, that's generally going to hold some more water within our GI tract, just because that's how things work. And that can cause a jump up in the scale sometimes. <clears throat> So understanding all of these things in terms of fluctuation is very normal. It is normal to fluctuate, right? Your wake up time can be another one that causes you to fluctuate with your weight. These are all very normal things. They're not fun because they get frustrating. And oftentimes when we're looking at how we progress in terms of our fitness, our muscle building goals, whatever it might be, we do tend to look very, very much so at the scale as our number one and main determinant of progress. And not to say that the scale is not a good determinant of progress, but it's not always a good determinant of progress. And we see that with normal day-to-day -day fluctuations. And it's very important that we don't get caught up in those day-to-day -day fluctuations. 
because what that can cause us to do is to make a lot of changes in the short term. Generally speaking, what I like to look for is a weekly average and trends. This is why we don't do check-ins daily with coaching. It's too much information, it's too much variable day to day, and it's not a long enough amount of time to really truly see changes. Take your time, check in with yourself once a week if that's what you're doing, and look at things on a little bit broader scale. Hey, my weight might be up today, but my average weight for the week is still down a pound. That is beautiful progress and that's a really great place to be. But if we get caught up in the day to day and only look at the day of weight, we missed a lot of that picture. So understanding that normal fluctuation is that in fact that normal. Uh, that helps us to hopefully be a little bit more objective with really what should be just a data point. When we look at our weight as just a data point, that helps us to come to a place where we have a much healthier psychological interaction with the scale. And this brings me into my next point, which is, woo, we have to also look at other measurements of progress apart from the scale. Now, this can be really tough if we're not paying attention or we're not gathering those other pieces of data. And so the big one for most people is just going to be simply your pictures, your pictures, your pictures, your pictures, side by side. And a lot of things can differentiate between pictures, how you're standing, your posture, your posing, if you're a bodybuilder, uh, the lighting can make a big difference. And all those things can make a really big difference in terms of how you feel about how you look. But you can also have a big difference made about how you feel about how you look in terms of how flat you are, which is, you know, hydration, glycogen. Um, and that's something we would expect to be pretty flat during a dieting phase. Or if we're holding inflammation, if we're working really hard, we're doing a lot of tough workouts, we're doing hit cardio, we're doing those kind of things, we can see inflammatory response come in and be part of the equation as well at that point. And so again, just like we have to have considerations with what's going on with the scale, we also need to have considerations with what's going on in your pictures. Understanding that we wanna do the best we can to have them as consistent as possible. Same poses, same lighting, same time of day, same day of the week, all those kinds of things. That way, even if we have the same things going on, inflammation, uh, whatever it might be, we're flat, uh, we should be seeing that week to week pretty much similarly and that allows us to put those next to each other to see progress. Now, progress is easily seen when you're leaner and getting leaner, right? When you're getting towards that really crazy lean spot, you're like, oh wow, like there's more veins, that line's harder, uh, that looks different. When we have more weight to lose, we might not see the same changes week to week. But that also brings me to some of my other pieces of information we want to gather. Measurements. At the very least, I'm of the opinion that you should be taking a waist measurement. That should be at the smallest portion of your waist. For most of us, that's going to be at or just above the belly button, okay? Uh, that helps us to have another objective number. So even if the scale's not moving, and even if our pictures feel similar, we can see differences in terms of measurements. Now, you can get more measurements if you want. You can do a bicep measurement, a chest measurement, a glute measurement. I actually do think that chest measurements are not a bad idea for most females because we do lose body fat from that area. Oh no, I know it's not where most of us want to lose it from, but it does happen. And sometimes that's where we see progress in terms of measurements and the scale and pictures. I know, not our favorite for most of us. But however, measurements give us just another piece of the puzzle to look at to say, I am making progress, I am not making progress, is it time to make a change? Do I need to be discouraged or frustrated? And of course, my last one that I wanna talk about of how to manage the scale fluctuations and other details about that is how are your clothes fitting? How are your clothes fitting? This one's really good for anybody that's maybe starting their weight loss journey. For those of us in prep, like when I prep, I have prep clothes that fit and I have normal life clothes that fit. <laughs> Uh, but I just start realizing that my, my shorts are a little bit looser. Um, I can fit into the medium without filling it out quite. It's not quite as tight. Um, all those kind of things. So paying attention to those as well. And then 
I'll leave it with this one. My favorite, my absolutely favorite one is the unsolicited compliments. If people are stopping you to tell you that you're looking better, that wow, you look like you're making progress. If they start stopping you to ask what it is you're doing, that is a huge indicator that people that are on the outside are seeing changes with you. And remember, there is zero reason for them to have to tell you that. Um, so that for me is obviously one of the best compliments and best indicators that we're making progress. So the scale, yes, we're talking about the scale, but we're also talking about all the other things that go along with it. So don't get lost in just the scale. Remember, there's a lot of other ways for us to back up whether or not we're still making progress.